Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about internet connectivity principles in IoT. Here is the learning outcome. By the end of this session, students will be able to critique the trade-offs between various internet connectivity options for a given IoT application in their own words. So these are the things that we'll be covering up in our video. First, I'll be taking you through uh, an example where uh, we will discuss uh, uh, the basic needs and why exactly we're learning all these things and why it is very important to understand the network capabilities and the types of options that we currently have in the market for Internet of Things. Uh, then we'll discuss about the types of network connectivity. Then we will try to uh, then we will try to uh, segment the given options into certain groups just within the scope of this video. And uh, finally, we will be uh, trying to set up a balance uh, depending upon an IoT application and then proceed ahead. So before proceeding ahead, uh, it's a good moment here uh, for the students to pause the video and think on uh, which entity of this diagram that you're able to see on the screen uh, belongs to which exact content of the cloud architecture that we have seen earlier. What you're able to see on the screen here is we have a couple of sensors just imagine that we have uh, some networks connected in a star topology like this uh, where we may have we may also have some mesh topologies available so these yellow dots whichever you're able to see here uh, can be considered as sensors so this entire thing uh, which is shown with the help of these yellow squares is a type of sensor and there are various configurations of the networking topologies available in the sensors. So as we are already aware that in a given computer network there are multiple possibilities like we have a star topology, uh, we have a ring topology and then we also have a mesh topology. So depending upon what kind of topology we are implementing in the given example, for instance, let us uh, imagine like these are the sensors like 1, 2, 3 and 4. These are trying to sense uh, temperature for instance and these are trying to sense humidity and these are trying to sense uh, maybe uh, the smoke across uh, some industrial plant. So at this moment, uh, it is very important to note that the available protocols that we have so that the entire data that is being sensed by these sensors uh, will be transferred to some gateway. So here, as we can see, we are having uh, again multiple options like what kind of internet we will be using. So ultimately, when we think about uh, the types of uh, connectivity options that we have, so that the data being sensed by these sensors uh, needs to be uh, pushed forward to the cloud. Uh, as the diagram shows here, we have a cloud storage available somewhere on the internet. Maybe it would be something like uh, uh, Amazon Web Service based content or it would be based on Microsoft Azure or it would be based on IBM's Blue Cloud. So irrespective of what kind of cloud storage we are having, we need to first of all think like how to transfer the data that our sensors are sensing to this particular cloud. So for that we may have multiple options like we may opt for Bluetooth, we may opt for Zigbee, we may opt for Wi-Fi or we may opt for an NFC that stands for near field communication. Depending upon the available situation and depending upon the uh, and depending upon the type of scenario that is present where these sensors are deployed we can decide like if the distance uh, from the gateway for instance let us consider that we have a small gateway over here and this gateway is compatible to understand the protocols of bluetooth zigbee wi-fi as well as nfc then i can say like uh, yes i have the following possibilities so that i can uh, yeah, i can actually force this particular star topology of so when i say like I have a gateway which is capable of understanding all these four protocols that is Bluetooth, Zigbee, Wi-Fi and NFC. Then I can 
consider these group of sensors which is currently following the star topology uh, can use Wi-Fi to transmit the data from this group of sensors to directly to the gateway. So the next group of sensors that we are uh, having here is a ring topology which we have uh, in the form of a ring. So I can follow uh, Bluetooth over here and here I am having a mesh so I would force these group of sensors to follow Zigbee. So as you can see depending upon the need of my own IoT application whether I need a mesh kind of a network or depending upon the topology that I am uh, making my sensors to be deployed I can actually go for the selection of the protocol so here what we have is the protocols so I can literally force any of the sensors and their deployment depending upon the application to use a specific type of protocols so whenever we have a gateway which is capable to understand all these protocol stacks it is whole and sole responsibility of the gateway to forward the data further to the cloud. So it would be either through a cellular data like what I'm showing you now, or it would be through a router, uh, which may further be connected through an ISP or any other sort of uh, network provider. And then further data, data is pumped to the cloud. And on the other hand, we also have uh, some sort of user applications like uh, it would be browsing some sort of uh, uh, applications on your cell phone or it would be a direct consumer where you are sitting in a net cafe or maybe in your computer labs in your organization or industry and then you are trying to access the internet. So it would generally happen through this particular channel. So your traffic is actually transferred to the internet over the router and then uh, this router is responsible for setting a proper connection to your cloud. And on the other hand, we also have some sort of home automation examples like uh, uh, you want to automate some of the appliances like your air conditioning units or maybe the light bulbs or whatever you have at your home. And then uh, again, you can set up your own IoT gateway in between uh, your internet So all these devices are somehow connected. All the, let us imagine that these are smart devices and these smart devices are connected to your uh, smart IoT gateway and then that will be holding the responsibility of uh, connecting that to your home router or uh, it will be directly connected to your satellite depending upon the application. And then uh, furthermore, uh, the control or the data that is being sensed by these home automation devices is transferred to the cloud through this router. So if you could recall the cloud architecture for Internet of Things uh, that was discussed in our earlier videos, uh, it becomes very prominent that the general architecture that we have on the screen now uh, is always following a certain structure which is very important for considering uh, the type of networks that we have and what protocol needs to be utilized. So let us move ahead and uh, so now let us discuss about the types of network connectivity available in our hand. So internet connectivity generally possess seemingly overwhelming number of options in today's market and, and one of the most widely used uh, internet connectivity options for IoT based devices is cellular network and uh, very rarely we may use the satellite uh, kind of internet where uh, imagine that we are trying to send some sort of uh, uh, industrial parameters over a ship where uh, you are in the middle of an ocean and you don't have any other means of uh, internet con connectivity except you, uh, you need to directly access the internet from the satellite. The third one is uh, which we are widely using in today's market is the Wi-Fi connectivity and the Bluetooth one. Apart from this we also have numerous number of applications like uh, NFC, RFID, LP WAN and all the things. So here we have high power consumption, high range and high bandwidth. So here a very good uh, 
comparison of the trade-offs between uh, the connectivity options we are going to lay down. That is here we can consider a smartphone which is trying to transmit a live video. Uh, definitely it requires a high power consumption. So by saying high power, what do we mean is it needs frequent charging. So if you consider your cell phone, definitely we need to charge it oftenly for every one or two days um, as of the current scenario what we are having in the market. And definitely uh, it has a very high range since it is having a cellular uh, connectivity. And also it has a very high bandwidth since we are having uh, 3G and 4G available in today's smartphones. We can say that the bandwidth being used is very high. Uh, and also the capacity of these devices to use uh, this high bandwidth is also possible. So the next type of category is wherever we are using Bluetooth and where we have Wi-Fi and we may use that Ethernet connection sometimes. So whenever we are talking about Ethernet connectivity especially, we can say like the power consumption is going to be really low. And of course, since we have a limit over the length of the Ethernet cable, the range is also very low. So here we can definitely gain higher bandwidth, low range and low power applications wherever we have embedded devices or any sort of other computers which are opting Ethernet connectivity. And the last option is low power, a very high range and a very low bandwidth. So this is something a uh, very tricky combination. So the most important protocol that we will be discussing in our further videos is LPWAN which stands for low power wide area network again which offers its variants uh, if we try to explore this protocol further. So this is an application where uh, the power consumed and the bandwidth being consumed is very low but what it is offering uh, is a very high range. So as a summary what we have is every IoT system combines uh, the four basic components like sensors, connectivity, data processing and user interface but what matters is uh, Ultimately, it comes down to your specific application and the organization needs uh, to choose a right component for uh, connectivity and the available options for connecting your sensors to the internet. Here are the references used. Thank you.